the next phase of the system life cycle is the development and the testing stage. So the first thing we need to look at is whether or not your program source code is going to be modular or not. So all a program is, it's just a file with some text in it. You can actually write most programs, in fact all programs really, in Notepad. You just need a compiler to change it into an actual program you can execute. So the source code for this program can be spread across, across many files. When this is the case, each file is called a module. If you've ever done any Visual Basic programming before, you'll notice that it has things called like module one when you first open it up. Now this is a really good approach to development because many programmers can work at the same time on different parts of the program and each module can be tested on its own. However, when they are put together, they may be incompatible. So we can't just test them separately, but instead we have to do a few different stages of our testing. So first things first, we need to look at the different types of test data. So the first type is normal data. Now this is what you expect. So it's expected data that should normally get typed in on a regular basis, which should work. Now extreme data is data that is unlikely to occur in practice, but could. So it might be if you're entering lots of dates, someone might enter a date of in the future of 999,999. Now that is very, very unlikely to occur, but it shouldn't break the computer. Now abnormal data is usually invalid data. So it's stuff that you shouldn't be typing in. So check that the system actually says, no, you can't enter that. So it might be a case of you typing in a date that hasn't come up yet. And then live data is where you test again at the end of the process to make sure that it actually works in a real life situation. Now, for each module, there should be a test plan. Now, there'll be a test plan for each individual module and a test plan for when you combine the modules. And then each of these stages will use tests from the previous stage and new tests as well to make sure that the actual modules themselves work on their own, they work together and they work as a combination. So you put in what test you've got, so you usually number them, one, two, however many, what you've entered, what type of test it is, what you expect to happen, and then what actually happens. So if you've got um, a test that rejects something that it shouldn't, then for the actual outcome, you explain what happens. You then fix the problem and go back and retest it. So if the testing goes well and the program works, you show it to the users and they say, and they see if, that's, if they're happy with the result. If it does not go well, you've got to go back and you've got to and start putting extra error trapping in. You might even be a case of like the actual program just doesn't work how you wanted it to. I remember once I was making a game, which I actually have got a video of it on my channel, but it's not very good. Um, and I was really struggling. It's a game where you've got to get a bunch of ants and these ants have got to eat this pie in the middle of the picnic and you've got to stamp on all of the different ants, stop them from eating your pie. And I couldn't get them to go in the right direction. So my teacher at the time at university stood behind me and just read my code, found the error straight away, and she said to me, right, read that code out again to yourself out loud. So I read the code out, and it turns out that my, I actually paused because I was like, actually, what I'm saying doesn't make sense. And it turned out that my logic of my program didn't make sense at all. So I was like, the reason why I was going the opposite direction was that my statement I had was in the wrong order. So it didn't make sense. So you might actually have to go back and change the whole logic of your program if it doesn't make sense and work how it should. Now, the kind of exam style questions you're going to be getting is things like what testing should be carried out before implementing the system, why is testing important, and describe how a new computer system should be tested before being operational. So I suggest you pause the video and I'll go through some of my answers in a second. Right, welcome back. So for the first question, the whole system needs Yeah, so the first answer would be the whole system needs to be tested. So Values need to be checked to see if the system produces the correct ones. Your modules need to be linked together and tested separately and together. And any out output should be checked before sending to clients. So instead of just blindly relying on the output to be correct, actually go check it, do it manually, make sure it's working as it should be done. And um, to prove the system's work as design, so that's the reason why we test, so we can trap errors and meet the system's requirements for the client. And each module must be tested independently, then tested together. Data should be transferred between modules to check for clashes, and errors should be noted and corrections made, and then you retest again. Right, hopefully that um, helped you out there with testing. 
and don't forget to subscribe, like, and put any comments on anything you want me to redo, anything you want me to improve upon, or any suggestions for future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.